Josh and his triplet brothers are experiencing what life is like in the New Zealand Defence Forces. And today Josh is at Whanuapai Air Base to get a taste of life as an avionics technician. How you going? I'm Josh. Hello Josh, Sergeant Brad Murray, Air Force. Here you want to be avionics technician? Yeah, for sure. Let's check it out. Yeah, sweet. Come along. So we better make sure you're operationally fit to join the Air Force. How's your push-ups? Oh, pretty good. I can uh, work out about 100. 100 push-ups? Well, your minimum requirement will be 30 push-ups. One, two, lovely, three, Every person four. in the Air Force <laughs> must pass a physical test four. every oh, six months. If they continually fail, they risk being discharged. 29. <laughs> good stuff. Hard work, huh? Oh, man, that's <laughs> Josh, you're doing quite like a hundred that you promised us. What happened? Uh, a bit more practice before then. Oh, yeah. For <laughs> sure. Doing those hundred baby press ups. <laughs> Next is the weighted march, where a weighted belt represents a 20 kilogram infantry combat kit. It would include weapons, ammunition, and survival gear. Good work. Well done. Woo! Man, sore calf muscles, eh? Oh. Turn our kilos on your little on your little frames, gotta hurt. <laughs> Brad, so what does an avionics technician actually do in the Air Force? Well, we maintain and repair all the aviation electronics and it helps keep all these aircraft in the air. Oh, that's awesome. This is a great example of where an avionics technician will spend most of his time. This is the nose of a Sea Sprite helicopter. We've got all our compass electronics over here, uh, our main aircraft battery, and this is our um, infrared camera control right up here. Brad's job is to support the air crew on the flight line by dealing with electronic faults. Pilot Pete Barron and flight engineer Robin Claffey report a fault on a C-130 Hercules. Just had the autopilot disengage on the climb out. We picked out and we had the elevator servo fail up here on the scratch pad. Brad, this aircraft needed again at 7.30 tonight for another task. Sweet, cool. We'll get on to it. Sweet. Time pressure is a common part of being an avionics technician as is knowing the aircraft. Wow, far out. This is the cockpit of our um, new upgraded Hercules, so all this equipment that you see in here is um, uh, avionics toys, pretty much. This is what wow. we play with. And a lot of the stuff that you won't see in any of the new commercial airliners and stuff like that, so we get to play with a lot of stuff that, um, that a lot of people don't get to touch. We've gone into the equipment history, and it brings up every fault. So if we look in here, it's got um, auto flight computer, processor, Elevator, servo, no go. That just confirms with what they saw. We can actually perform a test from here on that elevator servo. So there we go, test complete, test pass. The test should have failed, not passed. Hey Kev, you got a minute? Avionics technician Kevin Murray recently did work on this aircraft, so Brad investigates further. Yeah, they had that, uh, that fault last week. Uh, I'm pretty sure they changed the elevator servo. So I uh, guess might want to try something else. Cool, cheers. So it wasn't the elevation servo, but Brad has another idea. What's next? Well, we're going to take this computer out and we'll take it over to the bay for bench testing. Oh, sweet. Let's go. Hey, Brad, so if the auto flight computer is faulty, what are the dangers of that? Well, the autopilot in the plane is there to reduce fatigue in pilots. And pilot fatigue is one of the major causes of airplane crashes, so it's pretty important. Yeah, for sure. There are two types of avionics technician. Technicians like Brad, who work in the flight line, and bay technicians like Leith, based in the hey. workshop. Hey, Brad. How you going? Hey, um... Brad needs Leith to do a bay functional test to identify the fault. The functional test is passed. Well, now what? Brad needs to brainstorm this problem with avionics sergeant Dave McHugh. It's testing perfectly on the, on the rig. Yeah, yeah. What was the aircraft doing at the time? Um, they were climbing, they were in a climb. Because obviously the, the servo is going to take more pressure if it's the rate of climbs higher. Yep. So uh, that could be a problem. Would the simulator be able to check this out for you? That's a possibility. I can get the pilot and he can um, replicate all the flight conditions and we'll see if we can fault the computer then. For complicated issues like this, we're able to call on the whole avionics trade using their experience and knowledge to help us solve the problem. So we're not just on our own. The flight simulator can be used to test equipment by replicating dynamic real-world conditions. It checked itself out through a uh, 1,500. So it's come up 
through 1,500 feet um, per minute as before it's come up with uh, elevator servo fail. Yeah, so that was the fault that we saw. And that just confirms that the fault is lies within that computer as we suspected it would. So what kind of person is good for this job? Oh, you need to be, be um, pretty smart. There's pretty technical kind of stuff going on. And uh, So what are some of the rewards of this job? Uh, definitely a big reward for, especially someone in my position, is going away on trips and on the planes with a lot of the crew as well. I mean, they've got to take maintenance teams away with them. I've only just come back from Alexandra. Um, I've been to Antarctica, been to Canada, through the States, around all the islands, Australia, Asia, through the Middle East and through to the UK. So it's not only the pilots that just get to travel around the world, the yeah. maintenance crew do as well. While Brad has been at the simulator, Sergeant Dave McHugh did some research of his own and found a possible solution. Hey, Brad. Dave, got something for us? Yeah, spoken to manufacturer. Uh, they've got a, uh, a paper on this for um, adding a capacitor to the gyro main board. OK. This is our solder bench. And we're going to do exactly what the manufacturer has said for us to do, is replace the capacitor with a higher value one. So. What are the challenges of this job? Um, yeah, definitely time pressure, um, getting a serviceable aircraft to the aircrew on time. Yeah, speaking of time pressures, Josh, we better get this board back in the aircraft. But to confirm that the fault has been fixed, Brad needs to test it in an actual flight. Hey, sir. Hey, uh, plane's all good. We didn't change the elevator servo. We've changed the computer itself. One of the more enjoyable aspects of being an avionics tech is uh, you'll get a problem that is pretty complicated and, and it can't be seen. It has to be thought about. Sometimes they're not actually, they're not hard there. You won't you won't see a broken cable or you won't see a dent in the leading edge or something like that. They have to be thought about. It's inside a box and it's electrons which aren't seen. How'd that go? Yeah, it's all good. Yes. Yeah, no, it stayed connected the whole time. Well done. Just goes to show how important your guys' job is. Without without you guys, you know these planes wouldn't wouldn't stay in the sky. To be an avionics technician, you must be at least 17 years old, medically fit for service, be of good character, and be a New Zealand citizen. You need a minimum of 12 NCEA credits in maths, English, and science at level two or above. Before joining the Air Force, you will do a 17-week aeronautical engineering course in Nelson, and upon enlistment, you will complete a 12-week basic military training course. The Air Force pays for all costs of job training. Triplet Sam, Isaac and Josh have had a taste of three different careers within New Zealand's Defence Forces. So, what do they think? See why people join the forces because um, they pay for education and there's a lot of training to upskill. The chance to develop leadership and, um, and time management skills. A few uh, travel opportunities and um, also using state-of-the-art technology. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.